Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. This guy's got five Pete Rose cards. I forgot I'd let you look at them. So what do you want to know about these? If they're real? No. How do you, how can you tell that? What do you, what do you mean? Because the color's all faded, everything's a blur, even his face, it doesn't look silk screened. Oh, they're printed with an inkjet printer, and the picture looks overexposed. They probably scanned it and reprinted it. It's, it's just not right at all. These things right here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch them at all. They look completely fake to me. If these cards are fake, then you know, what else is real? Is the wife real, the dog, the cat? You know, what's real? What's up, guys? Today, we'll show you the times when Pawn Stars got robbed. 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. At a Florida car auction, Corey takes advantage of Rick's love for vintage muscle cars to snag a sick 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. Though Rick is initially very interested in the car, he backs down after discovering the vehicle does not have its original engine. You know, son, it's just a lot of work. There's a reason they don't make them like this anymore. You work on them all the time. Listen, buddy, you're flying home, I'm driving home, and I'm driving home in this. Corey wants the car so badly that he convinces Rick to pay $45,000 for it. The pair then enjoy a father-son road trip all the way back to Vegas, where they can find the old man ready to rip them a new one. He cannot believe that Rick paid $45,000 for the car, which can barely start after the long trip from Florida. The old man lectures Rick for spending too much because similar cars in perfect condition sell for $30,000. Not only did Rick overpay, but even after spending $8,000 in agency fees, the car would not sell. Turns out Rick threw good money after bad. Holy Corey, this thing don't even start. Fake baseball cards. When a client offers Corey not one, but three 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards, he instantly becomes suspicious. Corey questions the authenticity of the cards, but the client tries scoffing off his concerns. Got, uh, five tops 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards here, mint condition. My concerns are that, that they're in like almost too perfect shape, and that you got five of them. If these cards are fake, then I need to reevaluate my entire card collection. Unfortunately for the client, Corey is nowhere near as gullible as he appears. The emotional performance has no effect on Corey, who calls Rick to inspect out the shady cards. In under a second, Rick declares the cards as fake, and the client puts on an encore performance. He feigns a stammer and demands to know how Rick knows they're fake. Rick points out the obvious faults that make the cards poor counterfeits. Even giving up his attempt to grift Corey, the client remains in character till the end. While walking out, he pretends to be so devastated by the news that he questions whether his family and pets are real. This shady loser is as poor at acting as he is at counterfeiting. Maybe it's worse. This guy's got five Pete Rose cards. I forgot I'd let you look at them. So what do you want to know about these? If they're real? No. How do you, how can you tell that? What do you, what do you mean? Because the color's all faded, everything's a blur, even his face, it doesn't look silk screened. Oh, they're printed with an inkjet printer. And the picture looks overexposed. They probably scanned it and reprinted it. It's just, it's just not right at all. These things right here, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them at all. They look completely fake to me. If these cards are fake, then you know, what else is real? Is the wife real, the dog, the cat? You know, what's real? Rare Stradivarius Violin. Shum is charmed by Edgar, a jovial client who shows him a rare Stradivarius Violin that he inherited from his grandfather. He even shows Chum Lee a label inside the violin that ought to prove its authenticity. Got this violin here. It's been in my family for a very long time. Stradivarius. Stradivarius? Yeah. Every once in a while, one comes up as very, very rare. I mean, we're talking yeah. big money. Even in this condition, we're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. What makes you think this is a Stradivarius? Uh, one of the things I noticed, there's a label inside. 1731. Yeah, it says right in there, Ant Antonio Stradivarius, and this is Cremona. That's the town he was from in Italy. From my understanding is the copies had to have a label on there that said copy. It became a law. Shum is so stunned when Edgar asks for $700,000 for the violin that he immediately summons an expert to authenticate and appraise it. So how much are you looking to get for it? Well, based on the condition that it's in and what they go for, 700,000, I think is fair. Okay, I mean, just looking at it, to me it looks 
Far from $700,000, but I have no idea. I have some concerns. One is, is the condition. You know, the condition is everything. Two, I know that once something's worth money, people fake it. There's a lot of questions I have here. Yeah. I'd like to call in a friend of mine and have him come down and take a look at this. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Though Edgar claims to be excited to have an expert inspect the guitar, his mood visibility changes. The expert Aquiles denounces the violin as a forgery due to several defects, and the color drains out of Edgar's scammer face. When you want to talk about the great violins in history, the Stradivarius, that name, is the one that leads the way. What kind of price range is out there for these violins? Sure, so if this is a real Stradivarius violin, there's one of his violas, they want 40 million for it. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> and it's not sold yet. But give it time. Those Someone things, will buy it. they get older and they get more valuable. Well, let's take a look at this and yeah. see if that's what we got here. I'm excited. So the first couple of things that I look at are to see if all the parts line up correctly, which this one does, but it has significant damage. Um, his wood selection was such that when he put the varnish on his instruments and you would move it like this and it would sort of look like it's rippling, really just majestic, beautiful. But on this violin, I'm seeing a little too much dark. And even in this patch that's revealing, it's a sort of a muted brown. And the inner linings of this, that line inside there, is just a little too haphazard to be anything that he would have made. He doesn't make those mistakes. He takes so much time. Um, 1731 puts it right towards the middle end of his middle period when he was making some of his absolute best stuff, his best instruments. So are you telling me you don't think this is authentic? Unfortunately, no, no. This instrument was made as an homage. So what you have is from about the 1830s to about the 1960s, really, they would mass produce these in the millions. Do you think it has any value to it? In its current shape, not a lot. Well, thanks for coming down. Yeah. I wish we would have uh, hit gold with this one, but... That's always the hope, man. That's always the hope. Can't all the strings. So he, he doesn't think it's a strat. I'm going to have to, you know, go with him. I'm going to have to pass on it. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Submarine. Rick keeps his eyes so focused on profit when Lynette offers Rick a one-man submarine. He fails to see that the deal is too good to be true. Despite the sub missing a lot of parts and being in very rough shape, Rick knows that he can make a killing. So what do we have here? A one-man submarine. What is this? I thought we were coming to look at a sandwich. Yeah, it's not a submarine sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time anyone's brought a submarine to my shop. Uh, where in the world did you get this? I got it from somebody that told me to take it off their yard. They didn't want it. So this was just sitting in someone's yard that says you could have it if you want it. Right. It definitely looks like it's been sitting out in the weather for a long time. This sub is in rough condition and missing a lot of parts. Call me crazy, but I'm still interested. These things sell for big money in operating condition. So if I can get it cheap, I think I can make some money here. Lynette asks for $25,000 and Rick's alarm bells still do not go off when she accepts $3,000 without much haggling. And how much did you want for it? Oh, well, as is, 25 grand. This is my problem. I have no idea what it would cost to fix this thing up. I'll give you two grand for it. Can I do that? I'll go, I'll go three grand. That'd be it. All right, got a deal. OK. All right. Corey and the old man are furious that Rick has sunk money into such a stupid deal. Even worse, soon after the episode aired, they got news from the police that the submarine was stolen and its owner wanted to repossess it after seeing it on TV. You bought a submarine? Yeah. You know it costs like $10,000 an hour just to test to see if one of those things work? It doesn't work. I already know that, so we don't need to test it, do we? I thought we made a company policy we wouldn't buy no more damn boats. It's not a boat, it's a submarine. Close enough. That was a stupid buy. I'm gonna make money on this thing and then who's gonna look stupid? It's missing its upper viewing dome and a lot of the parts that originally made it function. It's pretty beat up. So how much would it cost to fix this thing up? This sub was sold originally for $150,000. To make this thing functional again, 
It's going to need some new viewing ports. You're going to have to fix the life support system. Its thruster motors are gone. You're probably looking at $100,000 to fix it up. Scrap the damn thing. Got a pile of damn junk metal. I should have killed that sale before it ever started. I'm going to sell it as a fixer-upper. Who are you possibly going to sell this thing to? A diver. <laughs> Someone will buy this off me. It's got to be worth something. Is it worth anything? The value of the sub as it sits is $10,000. Some sub builders could use the parts, including the pressure hull, for building another sub. Really? Eat crow, guys. Every one of you. I knew it had to be worth something. <laughs>